Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have the same type of problem, or virtually the same problem as we did in the previous video, but we're going to use metric units instead of the imperial units. And notice the meters have changed to feet, and well, everything else should be the same. So let's try it and see what happens here. Uh, first of all, we're told that the ball was dropped from 6 meters and it bounces back 2 meters. So from that, we should be able to calculate the coefficient of restitution. So E, by definition, is equal to the final velocity divided by the initial velocity, the final velocity going back up and the initial velocity coming back down. And using the comparison that the potential energy, when it's at its maximum height, equals the kinetic energy right before it hits the ground, we can say that mgh must equal one-half mv squared. And when we cancel out the m's and solve for v, we get the square root of 2gh, which by now should be very familiar to you. And so therefore, the final velocity can be written as the square root of 2g times the final height, which is 2 meters, divided by the square root of 2g times the original height, which is 6 meters. So basically, this is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 6, or 1 divided by 3. Take the square root of that, which is 0 0.5774. 0 0.5774. The next thing we want to do is realize that what they want to know is how fast should a ball be thrown into a wall in a horizontal direction with the same coefficient restitution so that it will bounce back far enough, 12 meters back, before it drops down to the ground from a height of 3 meters. That's the height at which the ball is thrown against the wall, assuming the same coefficient restitution, which means we need to find the time in the air. And the way we find time in the air is by using the old equation, y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times t plus 1 half g t squared. Now with metric units, it will look as follows. Final height, 0. Initial height, 3 meters. Initial velocity in the y direction will also be 0 because it's thrown horizontally. And then half g would be minus 4.9 t squared instead of the minus 16 t squared when we use the imperial units. So that means that t is equal to the square root of 3 divided by 4.9. And let's see what that is equal to. And that would be 0 0.7825. 0 0.7825, and that would, of course, be seconds. All right, now that we have the time in the air, we can calculate the final velocity that it must leave the wall with to reach the distance of 12 meters. So we can say that distance equals velocity times time, or uh, velocity is equal to distance, oh, uh, distance divided by time, which is equal to 12 meters divided by 0 0.7825 seconds. And 12 equals, so we need a speed of 15.34 meters per second. 15.34 meters per second. All right, so that's the final velocity required. So what should the initial velocity be? For that, we go back to the, co the coefficient of restitution. Here we can say that the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity divided by the coefficient of restitution. The final velocity is 15.34 meters per second, and the coefficient of restitution is 0 0.5774, which means we need to throw the ball with an initial velocity of 0.5. 774 equals 26.56 meters per second. 26.56 meters per second. If you throw it that fast, the ball will bounce back with a speed of 15.34 meters per second, which is then enough speed to reach a distance of 12 meters before it hits the ground. And that is how it's done. 